Hey everyone. Located in the mountains between India and Tibet is a beautiful place named Sikkim. Today, Sikkim of course is a part of the 29 states of India. How did Sikkim become a part of the Indian landmass? Today, let's know about the rich history of the beautiful Sikkim. Let's start the video, but before that, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel and like this video. The last ruler of Sikkim, Palden Thondup Namgyal, became a king because of a tragic accident at the western end of the Himalayan range. Crown Prince Paljur, the elder brother, who was also a Royal Air Force pilot and the king in line, was killed in a plane crash in Peshawar on 20th December 1941. According to an ancient curse on the Namgyal family, it is believed that the firstborns never make it to the throne. Many people in Sikkim thought that the crash might have occurred because of the curse. Sikkim's three main communities comprised the Lepchas, the Bhutiyas and the ethnic Nepali who had rivalry within themselves before 1642 century. Sikkim was a Buddhist kingdom that was ruled and governed by the Namgyal Chogyal dynasty from about 1642 to 1975. Till the 20th century, the people of Sikkim got adapted to what the analysts refer to as monarchical psychology. The reason behind so was the Chogyals ruling over them for about 333 years. The first ruler of Sikkim was Punsong Namgyal. He had full control over the Chumbi Valley, which today is a part of China and present-day Darjeeling. During those years, the kingdom enjoyed a varying degree of independence. The Buddhist Namgyal kingdom accepted the religious jurisdiction of Tibet for centuries. The matrimonial and cultural ties of the Sikkimese court were very close with the Tibetan aristocrats. The source of China's claim over Sikkim as an extension of Tibet was strengthened by these medieval links. The region's traditional Tibetan name was Denjong or the Valley of Rice. The name Sikkim is derived from Sukhim, which in the language of the Limbu tribe means the new palace of the Namgyal. Eventually, the entire kingdom was known as Sikkim. In 1706, a series of conflicts with the neighboring regions of Nepal, Bhutan and Tibet arose. By the early 17th century, the East India Company came into India. With constant battles between Sikkim and the neighboring regions and the East India Company supporting the Chogyals, the area of the Darjeeling was handed over to the Englishmen in the year 1835 as a sanatorium for British officers. With the East India Company establishing its supremacy in India and control over Sikkim, a treaty was signed between Great Britain and the Kingdom of Sikkim in 1861 named the Treaty of Tumlong. The purpose of the treaty was to ensure the protection of travellers and free trade to Sikkim. The British were interested in Sikkim because the easiest route to the heart of Tibet was through the region. They knew the strategic importance of this place. In 1861, the British seized southern Sikkim after further disturbances. They took over the regions Morang and Terai and made Sikkim a British protectorate. This Treaty of Tumlong was to govern relations between Sikkim and India till 1975. This is a very important point in the Sikkim history. Sikkim was a protectorate of British-occupied India for a long time. But after India's independence in the year 1947, the authorities decided to redefine the relationship between independent India and the Kingdom of Sikkim under the Chogyals. During that time, within the three main communities in Sikkim, the majority were ethnic Nepalis, but there were poor peasants and labourers who were under the oppression of the Lepcha Bhutia Zamindars. To better the situation, there was a movement that demanded the establishment of democratic rule the abolition of the Zamindari, the merger with India. There were agitations for the next two years and the situation began to worsen in Sikkim. Under pressure on 9th May 1948, a democratic government was set up with Tashi Shering as a chief minister. But 28 days later, the government was dismissed by the Chogyal with the support of the Indian government. 
After this, the Sikibis people felt betrayed by the Indian government. They sensed that the Indian government had used them by joining hands with the Chogyal. The Indian government was actually not comfortable with empowering the ethnic Nepalis as around Darjeeling, the ethnic Nepalis demanded Gorkha land. This instilled a fear that it would lead to a demand for a greater Nepal. So, the official Indian policy for the next two decades was to support and empower the Chogyal at the cost of democratic parties. In 1950, another treaty was signed between Sikkim's Maharaja Tashi Namgyal and India's then political officer in Sikkim, Harishwar Dayal. This treaty declared that Sikkim will continue to be the protectorate of independent India with certain provisions of it, having full autonomy to look after their internal matters on their own. Authorities of both places agreed upon it, by the time the Sikkimese rose in popular discontent against the Chogyal rulers. They were fed up with the feudal oppression and had no rights over crucial resources. They badly wanted to bring an end to the monarchical supremacy in Sikkim. People came in together and formed a party called Sikkim State Congress in the year 1947. In 1953, a new constitution was made by the Chogyal saying that the four general elections will take place in the upcoming years so as to set up a sort of democratic rule. But these elections still did not help much in actually establishing a democracy which the people of Sikkim wanted. In 1973, the royal palace was besieged by thousands of protesters. In order to resolve the issue, the Chogyals were left with no choice but to seek the aid of India. In 1974, reformed elections took place in Sikkim under India's supervision where the Sikkim State Congress leader Kasi Dorji emerged victoriously. In the same year, he brought a new refined constitution of Sikkim and India declared Sikkim as an associated state of India. The new constitution to a greater extent restricted all the powers that the Chogyals possessed, which made the Chogyals furious. Chogyals declared that they will internationalize the issue. To come to a unanimous conclusion, a Sikkimese monarchy referendum took place in the year 1975, where about 97.55% of Sikkimese voted in favor of abolishing the monarchy and joining India as a state. From the status of associated state, Sikkim finally reached the status of full state of India. It gained seats both in the Lok Sabha and Rajya Sabha of India. Therefore, this is how, on 16th May 1975, Sikkim became the 22nd state of independent India. On 11th March 1978, outside Gangtok, an accident killed the 26-year-old Cambridge-educated Crown Prince Tenzing who was the eldest son of Chogyal Thondup. The dynasty ended with this which marks a place in the history of Sikkim. The heartbroken Chogyal passed in 1982. L.D. Kazi was named the Grand Old Man of Sikkim. And at the age of 102, he passed away in 2007. He was awarded the Sikkim Ratna in 2004. Today, Sikkim is an intimate part of India with new opportunities for the Sikkimese people. Well, that's it for today. I hope you're liking Nerdy's discoveries. Can't wait for the next video to learn more and be fascinated about. See you on the next. Bye.